How does this ever change to this? Where does this kind of hatred begin? Hate is learned in the most unexpected ways. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Catch a nigger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. So little black Sambo didn't know what to do. He just couldn't think fast enough. Will you look at that coon just creeping along? And spooks are as slow as molasses. These are some of the more subtle ways that can make this turn to this. Of course, most white people don't really learn to hate that much. But because of the subtle things that start in childhood, a lot of white people are more prejudiced about Negroes than they think they are. For example, how many black people are there in your circle of friends? Are you comfortable with black people? Kind of crowded today, isn't it? Sure is. Uh, well, I mean, uh, it's just that. Well, I mean, they don't usually have so many people in here, you know. Yeah, you know, like they're usually out in the, you know, courtyard. It's yeah. windy today, so I guess everybody's inside. Are you afraid of black people? Do you think they are capable of great violence? <laughs> Does an interracial couple dancing make you get uptight? Do you compete harder because you don't want to be beaten by a black team? Or do you play easier and feel sorry for them because you think they're inferior to you? I like the way they get these colors. Oh, there's Annie and Ken. I'll see you later, okay? Do you have as close a friendship with a Negro as you have with your white friends? Do you feel that there is something different about black people? Much more than just the color of their skin? Uh, no, you didn't have it. Oh, not a good Miss Nowdy, you say? Yeah, he was really good. Uh, really? Do you think of Negroes as a group? Or do you like or dislike them as individuals? As you would a white kid. What would be your reaction to this blood transfusion? for yourself. Would you go to a black dentist? I don't really know. A black doctor? Where is the pain? It's right here in my chest. May I see it, please? That's our checklist of hidden prejudices. How'd you make out? Oh, and by the way, have you ever said, them spades, they all have rhythm. They sure do. They're great fighters, but they can't take a punch in the belly. You know, some of my best friends are Negroes. Oh, really? It's interesting to note that those last three comments are still being made by people who feel no animosity toward Negroes. They would be shocked to discover that their feeling that there's something different about black people beyond the color of their skin would be considered as prejudiced by one of their best friends who happens to be black. Not all prejudices masquerade as kindness or tolerance. There are many prejudices that come out of a personal hang-up, a dislike or contempt for black people that can no longer be swept under the rug of indifference. I sure don't want any of them for neighbors. They're dirty and they're scary. Besides, my mother and father say the value of our house will go down. They'll ruin the neighborhood. If I went to a school where I wasn't wanted, I'd leave, buddy. I'd leave. Yes, sir. <laughs> Gee, Dad. Now, just a minute. Look, but Dad. Son, look, son, I'm telling you, they have no ambition. Other minority groups have broken through. This is America. If they had anything on a ball, they could make it. If they don't, it's their own fault. No one ever gave me anything. I made it because I deprived myself of everything until I was successful. 
Honey, I just don't see how you can feel like All that. All right, I admit it. They were great, but I still don't like them. I still say colored people's skin is different. It's dirty and it smells. Oh, Stacy. You want freedom? I want money and then the welfare tax power. If God wanted them white, he would have made them white. I don't see why they have to make such a big fuss about everything. They don't like it here. Why don't they go back to Africa, where they came from? You don't understand. Don't tell me they're not lazy. All they want to do is to get onto welfare and make money for doing nothing. I'll tell you why they're rioting. Because they're too lazy to work and pay for the things that I have to work and pay for. Incidentally, I can't tell you what to hunt with your own gun. I just sell them. But I can tell you, I got three of them stashed in my house. And I can't wait for them coons to try and ride around here. Right? Right. You think they were kidding when they said burn, baby, burn? No, baby, they weren't kidding when they said burn, baby, burn. And that's at least one good reason we all better get straight on where it's really at. While we still have time. Don't tell me they're not lazy. Sure, they're lazy Negroes. Just like they're lazy white people. Or yellow skin. Or brown skin or even polka dot people. But it's not too hard to see why someone working on a job who doesn't feel that he's going to get the same advancement as a white guy doing the same job wouldn't try and work too hard. It's just that he's been discouraged in advance. They have no ambition. Ambition? Let me tell you about ambition. Every graduation in the assembly speaker says you have to start your way at the bottom of the ladder and work your way up. But they're mighty quiet about a black man in the same ladder. The black man knows that when he starts out at the bottom of the ladder, 99 out of 100 times, it's going to be the best he can do. His white boss, who is certainly never a relative, is going to promote the white guy anyway. How many times have you seen a black person in charge of whites? Not very often. Well, we black men know that merit doesn't necessarily count for us. Even though we're ambitious enough to knock ourselves out working at night, going to high school and college. If I went to a school where I wasn't wanted, I'd leave, buddy. I'd leave. If I had no pride, I'd do whatever was expected of me. The reason why I want to go where I want is because it's my right. I don't want to go where I'm not wanted socially, which means you're home if I'm not invited. But I do want to go to a school where white kids go to because they're much better equipped and they have teachers who went to better schools than most black teachers were able to get into. There's only one income tax form for the black and white people. So I see no honest and fair reason why I can't be allowed to get an equal education like the white kids get. There's already been one revolution because of taxation without representation, and I don't see any difference now. The Constitution guarantees me an equal education, and I want one so I can get an equal living when I graduate. Colored people's skin is different. It's dirty and it smells. As a physician who has worked as a skin specialist, for more than 30 years, I have had ample time to compare the skin of white and Negro patients. Apart from the greater abundance of the pigment called melanin in the skin of Negroes, there is no basic cellular difference and no scientific reason why white skin should smell any differently than dark. As far as skin odors go, it's my personal opinion that it's all a matter of hygiene. Five minutes, five days after a bath, we all smell the same. And also, the skin of all so-called white people has this same pigment factor in it. The only time anyone's skin is truly white is when pigment is not formed at all, as in the albino. Incidentally, albinos may be born to Negro parents. If they don't like it here, why don't they go back to Africa where they came from? If we were born here, we belong here, right? We belong here just as much as the Caucasians. Now, if everybody went back to where they came from, all that would be left would be the Indians. And the white Americans didn't give them a fair shake either. So somebody tell me, where are they going to send all them Indians? They'll ruin the neighborhood. Ever been in the home of a black American family? Come on in. Living room or parlor. Kitchen. And
grand dining area. My parents' bedroom. Mine's kind of messy. Bathroom, of course. Backyard. Garage. It's really about the same as any other home when the father makes about ten to twelve thousand a year. It takes the usual amount of cleaning, washing, dusting, waxing, sprinkling, mowing, and little repairs to keep it that way. Unfortunately, most homes in the black community don't have husbands and fathers or enough income for the mothers to stay home and take care of them. So obviously their homes won't look as good as this one. Also, when some people feel that life is too much for them, they get discouraged and give up on taking care of things, especially when rats and roaches and crumbling walls and ceilings are the best the majority of black families can afford. Black Americans are expected to overcome the discouragement and humiliation of white racism outside the ghetto, they are also expected to rise above the dead-end poverty and hopelessness of life in the ghetto. From the very beginning, from the day a black child is born, the odds against it are much greater than they are against a white child. In the first year of life, three times as many black children die as white. The odds against the normal birth and survival of the black baby frequently begin with the working pregnant mother and continue through childhood with a lack of proper nourishment and medical care. The average white family's income buys medical care which is usually much better than a trip to the public clinic for the average black baby. Not only is there a difference in medical care, but in what is considered typical nourishment for most white children. Wonderful pears, all the vitamins. How's that? You like that for lunch? This difference in nourishment has existed for generations and still exists. For millions of hungry and undernourished black children of all ages, the same as it does for the white children who are victims of the same kind of poverty. In this home, there isn't enough extra food to feed a cat. So this child will grow up without experiencing the simple pleasure of having a pet, without things to see and hear, without the toys most kids have which actually stimulate mental growth. The barren world most ghetto children see gives them a handicap in school that they may never overcome, a handicap they may carry Lord outside Fairfax. of school with them for the rest of their lives. Kathy? Lord Fairfax owned several million acres of land in Virginia and employed George Washington to, to survey the land. The game is familiar. Most of us have played it. But probably not in this kind of playground. One of the worst problems of ghetto life lack of parks or recreational facilities. It doesn't take too long before these games are played for real, with goals frequently based on examples of borderline and illegal characters having the most money and status in the neighborhood. Inside or outside the ghetto, there are many ways for black children to learn at the early age of three or four that there is something very bad and different about being black. When this kind of prejudice is directed against you throughout your entire life, it can create a feeling of self-hate and of being an unwanted and unrespected subhuman, which is to say the very least, capable of turning into hatred directed toward all white people. Well, you got yourself some golden french fries now, don't you? Yeah, can I have one of your fries, huh? How come you don't look like me? I asked you a question, chili lips, answer me. Hey, 
are you going to start a fire, man? <laughs> oh. What's the matter there, black boy? First of all, we're going to draw this line to find... Ooh. Oh, boy, now stop yeah. this. Dwayne, turn around. Now be quiet. Turn around. Just turn around in your Frequently chair. Frequently in the black ghetto schools. The teacher represents the white world of authority and is unable to reach the black child with much success. For the black as well as the white teacher, one of the biggest problems is discipline rather than teaching. Are you doing this on your paper or on someone else's paper? In some dilapidated and overcrowded ghetto schools, there aren't even enough textbooks to go around. Many of these deprived students who plan to go on to higher education find that they cannot meet entrance requirements of most colleges. A visit to the stores of his ghetto is further discouragement and shows him that as far as a job or a business career is concerned, most of the business establishments are run by whites. With black people doing the same low-skilled jobs they are hired to do in the white section of town. What little money is brought into the ghetto from people working outside doesn't stay there to circulate and build the community. The white businessmen take it to their communities. And the small Negro middle class of doctors, dentists, small businessmen often live outside the ghetto and also do their shopping in the better stocked stores outside the ghetto. All right, I'll give you an However, there are comparatively few black middle-class businessman because it's much more difficult for a black man to get money to start a business than for a white man with the same job and business background. Your name is Lottie Richardson, that's correct? There are many black families who have discovered they can get more money on welfare than on the jobs available to them. To the unemployed and underemployed ghetto families, welfare becomes the only answer to their economic problems. To most black families, the welfare worker is regarded as another representative of the white world outside the ghetto. And what do you as someone you strange know? who doesn't begin to understand their problems and is far more concerned with rules than with people. In many states, an unemployed male head of the family cannot live at home if the family is getting welfare. If he has a job that pays less than his family needs, he will not get the difference in money from welfare. Therefore, many homes have absentee fathers who are forced to leave because this is the only way their family can have enough money to live. This creates a home without a man, a home without a father, a home where the mother has to manage without a husband. In time, this makes the absent husband already hurt and discouraged stay away altogether and produces another victim of what he feels are white society's rules and regulations regarding poor black people. That the ghettos have erupted in riots comes as no great surprise to black Americans inside or outside the ghettos. These riots, called rebellions by many black people, have forced many basic issues up to the surface for all Americans to face, especially the issue of violence. And I tell you what this country needs is law and order. What this country needs even more than law and order is justice. And if it would take violence to get that justice, we're ready for this too from slavery, emancipation, reconstruction, and suppression. The lives and the history of the Negro have been dominated by violence or the threat of it. There have been nearly 4,000 lynchings since 1889, also street murders, clan flogging, home and churches burned, and bombing that went unpunished, with very little help from the white government or its courts about law and order, or the police, to protect the black people. And there's another type of violence, a violence to the heart and to the mind of the Negro. So why the big surprise when he's ready to be violent against those who've been violent against him? I think it's remarkable that he's refrained from violence all this time up to now. I'm tired of the Negroes being accused of violence. How many world wars have the Negroes fought? Listen, Whitey made all the rules, then he did himself all the aces. I'm just getting back one tiny bit of what belonged to my great-grandparents. Whitey owes us more we'd be able to get in a million right. If you study Negro history, you know that in 1863, after President Lincoln drafted men from New York City, hundreds of white men were so angry that they rioted.
they went to the Negro part of town ransacking, yes, looting and burning buildings. Hundreds of black men, women, and children were shot and beaten to death or hanged from trees and lampposts. There hasn't been much mention about this in history books, has there? Yeah, man, we're, we're uptight. We're ready to burn it all down or blow it up, if that's what it takes, and ourselves with it. We've had it with Whitey. We want ours now. And what does Whitey have to say about violence, rioting, and looting? Okay, so they've got a gripe. But I say these riots were started by juvenile delinquents so they could loot. Honey, the only way to stop riots is to kill anybody who loots or throws a Molotov cocktail. For after all, you can't have a country without law and order. As long as they write in their own neighborhoods, I couldn't care less. But they better not come to the white part of town, because if they do, they've had it. So my father's got a gun, my friends have got guns, and we'll stop them right in their tracks. And on the other hand... You know, this may sound strange coming from a white guy, but I don't think we've got any right to complain about their fighting back. After a while, anybody would fight back. But I don't like to see all that rioting. It can only lead to needless killing, government restrictions, even a state of emergency with the government canceling elections and all that. Besides, I think there are better answers than rioting. For how long can you expect Negroes to see how great it is to live in America on their television sets and in the movies without them seeing how different their own lives are? The thing that bothers me about this whole situation is there are so many Negroes that hate the white people. That's not right. It's just as wrong as the white people hate the Negroes. Because there are so many white people that are really trying to help them. Why they've given up jobs and why they've been beaten up and some of them even killed because they work in the civil rights movement. Everybody's always yakking about fair play in sports. But how about fair play where it counts a little more, like being treated the same as everybody else? I think if I were a Negro, I'd blow my cork and fight for my self-respect too. Not only are many black Americans ready to fight, for what they feel is rightfully theirs. But unlike ever before, they are proud of their identity as black people. This can be seen in a great outpouring of art and literature as never before. As a group who feels they have not been represented fairly in the history of the United States, and as a direct response to a deeply felt rejection by so much of white America, many black people are turning to Africa for their cultural, folk, and historical roots. Hairstyles of boys and girls, men and women, are proudly African. As is much of the clothing. Swahili and other African languages have been requested by the black community and are being taught in junior high, high school, and college. Wazionase. Music is black. Dance is black. Theater is pridefully black or African. In a new attitude of identifying with a pre-slavery black culture and tradition. You got say about being right or wrong, you come to me. But there are those who feel that the American Negro has a great deal to be proud about. You know, I dig the new African look. I think it's a groove. But I'm American, and I'm proud of it. Because one thing, we as black people have a lot we can be proud of, that we contribute to this country that you don't read about in the white history books, you understand? But there's one thing you know for sure, and that's that music, that sweet soul music. Everybody try to imitate us because they know where it's at. They know what's happening. We know, they know we got soul, you understand? Even the Beatles started out that way. Can you dig it? Not only is history being questioned, but what has been taught about religion, too. Hey, what about the story of Christ? We always see him as blind and blue-eyed. If he came from where he did with his parents and ancestors, he should have dark hair and black eyes. Hey, do you mean to tell me that there are only white, blue-eyed angels in heaven? That with all those nice, dark-skinned brothers and sisters dying all these years, there isn't at least one little black angel 
sound like they're kidding. But are they? Lots of things are changing. There are even new attitudes about old words like Negro, colored, black. Please don't call me a Negro. That's a white man's word. And don't call me colored either. Better call me black, because that's what I am. I'm a black man. Another big change is something called black power, a phrase much misunderstood. Basically, black power calls for a bigger share of the power in the politics and economics of America, for black Americans. Black power also calls for self-help without white leadership in black civil rights and political organizations, as well as in all government training and business aid programs for black people. To some black people, Self-help organizations are no answer to the hatred that they feel for white people. They want absolutely no personal or organizational involvement with white people at all. All right, I'll tell you what I think about it. Every time I see Whitey in the black movement, I'm going to tell him to leave. I don't need him or his help. And any other black man with pride will tell you the same thing. Look, we've held back the way we've felt for 300 years, and I'm not doing it anymore. I won't lie to you. I wouldn't go from here to there to save the life of any honky I know. There are millions of Afro-Americans like me, and all we really want is to take over the state so we have the majority and keep them for blacks only. Put up great big signs saying, no whites allowed. There's a lot of bright black people coming out of the schools all of the time, and we'll build our own businesses, and we'll run them, and we'll elect our own black politicians, and they'll take care of us. Man, I don't want to hear no more of that mess about what the white man's doing for me. I mean, my people have spent hundreds of years listening and trusting the white man. And uh, the only reason he's doing anything at all is because <laughs> we made him. Yeah, we made him. The black community is not in agreement on the issue of whitey and violence, be it in the form of rioting or just plain personal hatred. Many feel that black racism is as bad as white racism and that the problem is far too serious to be solved by separating black and white Americans any longer. Hating white is just as bad as hating black. Hating anyone from the color of their skin is just as sick. I think the basic problems will never be solved by rioting. I'm sure the government has gotten the message by now. If we go too far, the government will have to do its thing. They'll have to side with the law and order people. It's the only way they can go. What we should do is keep after the government all the time until we get what the Constitution says is rightfully ours. I think that only the extremists want to make a black world for themselves. I believe that most black people feel that not only can things be worked out together, but that they must be very soon before terrible things happen to black and white Americans. Well, just how will all Americans respond, black and white? Will it be in time to prevent what government agencies feel to be the greatest national emergency facing this country since the Civil War? This problem is too old and too complicated for easy, happy answers. But here is an example of what black and white parents and students have worked out together with a cooperative school system. In Los Angeles, students who volunteer for Project APEX, an educational enrichment program, attend courses which are taught in schools other than their own. This automatically brings together children of all races in these special classes where they share the same academic and cultural interests and are able to meet and work on problems together. 
For many, it's the first contact that they've had with people their own age of a different race. In New York City, street academies prepare dropouts for college. Here, black and white teachers contribute their services in facilities paid for by white business organizations and run by black administrators. Other organizations like TRI teach trades to the dropout, the unemployed, and the underemployed with the help of private and government funds. There is no question that there are many people in business and government who are sincerely committed to overcoming the ghetto-produced education and income gap. What about adults? Recently, more and more business organizations are building their plants in ghetto areas. Not only are black people being trained for higher technical skills, but also for top management positions. In some instances, the government provides the money for these training programs. The government also provides experts to help black men go into business. And this includes guaranteeing the loan at the bank. Many private businessmen are contributing their time and services to help get these new businesses off the ground. Even the most conservative businessmen realize that it will cost less to help black men go into business than the millions spent on welfare. Besides, these businesses will be paying taxes rather than taking money on welfare or unemployment insurance. In cities all over the United States, more than a hundred years after the Emancipation Proclamation, white people are meeting with black people in an all-out effort to wipe out hatred and misunderstanding between the races and to replace it with something more in the American theory of democracy for all. What can I do? 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 Well, the first thing to do is to relate to each other as individuals, not as whitey, honky, coon, or nigger. Don't answer white racism with black racism, or black with white. It's too late in the history of this country to do that any longer. You can also share your advantages, opportunities, and better education with those that don't have them yet. You can tutor. You can teach. You can be an active part of organizations working to give an equal chance to black people to enjoy what America has to offer all its people. But equal education, equal housing, equal jobs, these will never have any real meaning unless your own personal relationships with black people are the same as they are with whites. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and thing you know, one of them niggas will be wanting to marry your sister. All these people could not have wanted to marry your sister. And neither did he. Well, what do you say after that? How many words? How many pictures, how many lives is it going to take? A great man once said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. That's what he said. What do you say? to help one another, make this a better 